Black Sea. The Ukrainian Air Force also says Russian supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles were launched in the direction of the Odessa region. Officials there urging people to hide in shelters. And police in Germany are... The various war games that were done ahead of time that predicted certain levels of advance, uh, and that has slowed down. Why? Because that's a difference between war on paper and real war. These are real people in real machines that are out there really clearing real minefields, and they're really dying. Uh, so when that happens, units tend to slow down, uh, and that's rightly so, in order to survive, uh, in order to get through these minefields. So they're working their way through it. Uh, it is far from a failure, uh, in my view. Uh, I think that it's way too early to make that kind of call. And although the minefields appear to be slowing things down, the war may get more difficult for Russia. A video posted by the infamous Wagner Group leader Yevgeny Prigozhin's press service on Telegram said the Wagner Group will no longer fight in Ukraine for now. And the Wagner Group fighters were ordered to gather their strength for a new journey to Africa, where the force has been known to operate. And another new development, the Department of Defense has announced a new security assistance package for Ukraine. This one is valued at $1.3 billion. It will include four air defense systems, mine clearing equipment, and other resources to help support Ukraine's fight against Russia. Jason Perry, NTD News. On how the DOJ handled Hunter Biden's tax violations. Between 2014 and 2019, this brings the total amount of foreign income streams received to approximately $17 million, correct? That is correct. Hunter was, was like the, the point salesman. So what was he selling? There were multiple instances in this investigation where um, there were references to, uh, to the, the father of the subject, President Biden. But some Democrats took issue with the evidence that was presented, some pointing to what they call political meddling under the Trump administration. They're cherry picking from the letter, right, where they say, oh, David Weiss said this, but they're not then reading the rest of the letter where David Weiss said he had full authority. Perhaps we should discuss Ivanka Trump's investigation being charged, who was close to being charged with felony fraud after Donald Trump's personal attorney provided political contributions to the local DA. Those charges were dismissed. Democrats repeatedly said that this four-year-long investigation was thorough, and ranking member Raskin said that Hunter Biden already pled guilty to misdemeanors on not paying taxes, but the GOP says those charges should have been felonies. And the assistant prosecutor, Leslie Wolf, said she agreed with those felony charges for tax year 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 was while Biden was president, and they wouldn't do it. And yesterday I asked Chairman James Comer what's next for their investigation. He did not directly answer my question, but they have continuously said that they will just continue to follow the money. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Melina Weiskopf, NTD News. Investigation into alleged tax crimes. The 53-year-old set to plead guilty to misdemeanors in the case. Two whistleblowers from the IRS telling a House committee Wednesday that there was enough evidence to press Hunter Biden with felony tax evasion charges, but claims the Justice Department hampered that investigation. Some House Democrats deny any preferential treatment, and Republican members of the committee call it a double standard. Hunter Biden is expected to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges next week. Meanwhile, a grand jury is set to hear testimony today from a White House aide who was with former President Donald Trump on January 6th. The jury will decide whether or not to indict the former president over alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Today, William Russell will testify. Russell was a former White House aide and now works on Trump's presidential campaign staff. This isn't Russell's first time in front of a jury, also making an appearance in front of the jury investigating the riots on January 6th. Trump is not expected to be at the federal courthouse in Washington. A target letter sent to Trump outlines the three federal charges against him. Russell will be one of dozens to testify in that case. The Senate scrutinized corporate mergers. Bidenomics is about increasing competition, not, not stifling competition. Anti-competitive mergers can hurt people 
can drive up costs as well. The administration said they proposed new guidelines to use to determine whether or not to block a merger. The checklist includes examining if the merger would significantly increase concentration in highly concentrated markets or eliminate substantial competition between firms. But the U.S. Chamber of Commerce fired back, saying such new scrutiny would only chill merger activity and deny smaller companies access to the capital and expertise they need. The group has also criticized Biden's Competition Council, saying that this Washington knows the best approach will make our economy less competitive. Supporting pro, pro small business, uh, pro entrepreneur, pro worker, and pro consumer. And that is, we believe, by Binomics in action. The White House today also announced steps to tackle so called junk fees and lower food prices. But this Biden economics agenda that is trying to promote does not seem to have convinced that many Americans. A new poll released today shows 62% of Americans still do not approve of Biden's handling of inflation. But the White House has been pushing back. The polls don't tell the whole story. They don't tell the full story, and we understand that. And this Thursday, President Biden is traveling to Philadelphia to once again talk about Bidenomics. Reporting from the White House. From uh, these federal agencies, the latest two more coming from the IRS, actually testifying on the Hill today related to Hunter Biden. What do you make of all of this? <laughs> Well, first of all, let's make sure we understand these were two highly credible whistleblowers <laughs> that we heard from today in the Oversight and Investigations Committee, and that's very important. And, you know, it, it is so sad to see that our country uh, has evolved to the point where the DOJ and the, and, the, and, and the FBI have been politicized and weaponized and used as a political weapon. That's, that's a sad state of affairs. And look, there are good people in the DOJ. There are good people in the IRS. There are good people in the FBI. But just like every profession, there are some bad apples, and they need to be weeded out. But it's sad to think that, and you know, there's two sets of laws here. There's a, a set of laws if your name's Biden and a set of laws for everyone else. And that's what really frustrates people the most. And the other thing I want to point out here is that I find it to be really unbelievable that at this time when the whistleblowers are coming here on Capitol Hill, that Donald Trump is being uh, investigated for his role in January 6th, that, that, you know, that's just more than just coincidence. It's really sad. Congressman, I just want to switch gears a bit here. Uh, you actually sit on the Committee on Energy and Commerce as well as the House Budget Committee. Uh, the president is touting Bidenomics uh, and, and what he touts as successes in the economy. I want to just read out a tweet here and get your reaction. He says, uh, the president says, real wages for the average American worker are higher than it was uh, before the pandemic, with lower wage workers seeing the largest gains. That's Bidenomics. What's your reaction? Well, Bidenomics, uh, we've had enough of Bidenomics, let me tell you. This country, I don't think, can stand a whole lot more of Bidenomics. In fact, a CNN poll has said that 66% of Americans aren't happy with the economy and the way it's performing right now. So real wages may be up and inflation's up too. Now, we've seen it come down, and that's a good thing, but it's still high above what it was when he took office. And, and again, you know, you can make the argument that a lot of what has happened in our economy has been a result of, uh, of the policies of this administration. It's been self-inflicted. Day one, this administration declared war on fossil fuels, and it, resulting in higher gasoline prices, resulting in higher inflation, resulting in higher interest rates, resulting in the mess that we have in our economy right now. So to think that this president would take responsibility and think that Bidenomics is a good thing, it's just ridiculous. Now, Israeli President uh, Isaac Herzog earlier today addressing you and your colleagues in a joint session of Congress. Uh, what, what was uh, important about this address, and, and what is the current state of U.S.-Israel relations? Well, first of all, I think that the, the president did an excellent job. I, I was there, I was president of the speech, and uh, it was very positive, very encouraging, and I was very impressed. And I, But I have to tell you, I think that the relationship is still good. It's sad, though, to think that even last night we had nine Democrats who voted, had the opportunity to denounce anti-Semitism, and they didn't do that. And that's a sad state of affairs. There's still people, uh, even though Representative Jayapal will walk back her remarks, it still shows a deep divide here among some members of Congress and among some people in, our, in the Democratic um, caucus that it, it's really disturbing. 
Congressman, I want to get your thoughts. In a sense, would you say, or is it fair to say, uh, that a secure and peaceful Israel also make the United States uh, safer? No question about it. We need Israel. Israel needs us. That's what the president said today in his speech. Again, a, a very encouraging speech, a very inspirational speech, making it clear that both countries need each other. And we do need Israel. They are our ally in democracy in the world, and particularly in the Middle East. And that is vitally important for us. And we always need to be aware of that. Congressman Buddy is in complete control over an investment. However, investing in mutual, in mutual funds would still be allowed. The bill imposes heavy penalties for officials who break the rules. As Senator Hawley put it, politicians and civil servants shouldn't spend their time day trading and trying to make a profit at the expense of the American public. More bankruptcies may be coming for American companies. Over $100 billion of U.S. corporate debt are trading at distressed levels rarely seen in the last decade. And TV Business' Don Ma speaks to a money manager for more. And here with me is Tavi Costa, Portfolio Manager at Crescat Capital. Um, you know, some potential strong headwinds facing the economy is the amount of debt. Um, I, I want to start off with corporate debt. Uh, currently, many companies are locked into low interest rates, but a uh, refinancing wall, uh, so to speak, could be coming up. So, I mean, we have to respect the lag effect of, of the Fed's uh, interest rate hikes. I just wanted to get your thoughts on how much of a headwind are we facing because uh, the U.S. is very much leveraged on many levels. Yeah, overall, the corporate debt relative to GDP is not as pronounced as you would think. However, there are companies that have issues, and there are companies that I, I like to say, for instance, that are a lot of business models that would never work in a 70s environment, not because of the world being different, but just because of the, the cost of capital being drastically higher. And we're seeing structurally higher uh, interest rates in general. Like you said, a lot of companies are gonna have to be either restructuring their debt, like Carvana did yesterday, uh, and the stock pop of those deals and so forth, but not a lot of companies will have the fortune to have uh, you know, some sort of alternative uh, to clean up or make their balance sheet look better. By the way, by no means, I think Carvana did a great job at that either. I disagree with the market reaction. But I think some companies will have those alternatives. Majority of those, the companies that are highly levered are in big trouble and their businesses are in big trouble. And so as a money manager, I think you want to be uh, seeking to, uh, to parts of the market that can provide you that exposure on the short side. We've been looking for companies that have you know, average maturity debt that will be you know, in one or two years out, meaning they're going to have to roll their debt in, in two years or so. And there's a, a significant amount of those with negative free cash flow uh, already in, into the junk status. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of issues with that. I mean, I, I can't imagine a company losing money on a free cash flow basis consistently for the, net, for the last five, you know, 10 years or so. Also having to restructure the debt uh, at a much higher uh, you know, interest rate. Um, and so remember, 15 months ago, uh, the Fed funds rate was a zero. So, you know, things are going to have to be uh, uh, readjusted in a big way here. Are we going to see more bankruptcies than in the future? I would imagine uh, the scenario you just laid out could result in that. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be bankruptcies. It's going to be geopolitical, uh, you know, tensions, meaning Debt creates problems, right? But the overall, overwhelming levels of debt, and then you have interest payments is starting to increase relative to what a company makes, what a country makes. You start seeing some populist agendas, not only from a, a country-wide uh, manner, but also from even the business side. You start seeing protests, people not being able to, uh, you know, to live in an environment where cost of living is so high, and, and they start pressuring companies to pay higher wages. And then companies have to squeeze their margins, but they're already holding a lot of debt. So, yeah. All right. Thank you so much today, Tavi. Always great speaking with you. Thanks for having me. Here's a striking figure about America's real estate market. Just 1% of all U.S. homes have changed hands so far this year. That's according to data from Redfin, and it represents the lowest figure in at least a decade. Company Info showed only about 14 out of every 1,000 existing homes moved from one owner to another in the first half of 2023. In 2019, it was 19 out of every 1,000 homes. 
Experts believe the rate should be closer to 40 or 50 homes out of every 1,000 in an active market. Real estate professionals believe high interest rates and a low inventory of homes on the market are the main reasons for the current trend. For subway commuters, here's something worth noting. After eight years, subway and train fares are going up again in New York City. Yesterday, the MTA voted to raise the fare from $2.75 to $2.90. They resisted raising the prices in recent years in an effort to bring back riders lost during the pandemic or at least not lose more fares. Weekday ridership is currently back at about 70% of pre-pandemic levels. Riders will see increases starting August 20th. More colleges are putting an end to legacy admissions. This comes after the Supreme Court struck down affirmative action in college admissions last month. The two latest schools to drop legacy admissions are Wesleyan University, a private liberal arts university in Belltown, Connecticut, and Carnegie Mellon University, a private research university in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This means they will no longer consider a student applicant's relationships with alumni in the admissions process. Legacy admissions have come under scrutiny following the Supreme Court ruling. Some claim it's an unfair advantage for wealthy students. A study by Education Reform Now found that 10% to 25% of those admitted to top universities are legacy admits. Officials in Illinois are conducting... ...that can easily absorb a lot of heat. In summer, the water in the loop dumps heat into the ground. In winter, it pulls heat from the earth indoors. A heat pump can move heat from the ground or the air outside into your house. And the most efficient way to heat your house with a heat pump would be to use the ground because in the winter, the ground is much warmer than the air is on a cold winter day. Besides the cost and the yard disruption, there can be permitting delays, but they could be the right option for some. Andrew Thomas, NTD News.